Hi, my name is Dan. This is an acoustic guitar tutorial for one of my favorite worship hymns, Jesus Paid It All. I'm going to use the version from the Passion Project from 2006. The song was led by Christian Stanfill. The project was called Everything Glorious. The song is in the key of B. It's at about 76 to 80 beats per minute. I'm going to show you a capo 4 version playing G chords so that when I play a G chord, it's going to come out sounding like it's a B chord. Let me first show you the chords I'm going to use during the song. First chord is a G chord, which I usually mute my A string with my second finger, but you can play the full version if you want. Then there's a G over B, and you only play five strings on this chord. And so I will mute the E string with my thumb, just in case I accidentally hit that string, it's not gonna ring out. And then I also mute the D string with my first finger as well. Then there's a C chord, which I will mute the D string with my second finger, but you can put your first finger down if you want and get the full version of the C chord. I just usually mute it out of habit. And I also mute the E string with my thumb once again so that if I accidentally hit that string, it's not going to ring out. Then there's an A minor, and there's a whole bunch of different ways you can play A minor. You can play the normal A minor with the five strings. You can play an A minor seven this way, an A minor seven that way. You can play the A minor this way. I typically will play with my first finger on the D string of the second fret and have it mute or leave open the G string, either one. There's with it open, here's with it muted. There's not a whole lot of difference, and then have my third and fourth fingers on the B and E string on third fret. So those are the chords in the intro. And when I play the intro, the entire time on the intro, my third and fourth fingers will just stay rooted on the B and E string third fret. You have the G, G over B, the C, A minor, and I'm just kind of keeping those fingers there. During the verse of the song, there's also a G major seven, which I play with three fingers. So my second finger is muting the A string. It may even be muting the D string, but you don't have to do that. There's a with it unmuted. Yeah, so I don't think it really matters. But the trick is to take your pinky off of the third fret of the E string and have the first finger play the second fret of the E string. So here's the G, and then here is the G major seven. That is one of the reasons why on the G chord I will mute the A string. That way the first finger is free to do that G major seven chord or to play some other things. There's also a D chord on the verse or a D, um, here's a normal D. I typically play a D add four or D suspended during this song. So I'll play once again with my third and fourth fingers on the third fret of the B and E strings. And then you have the E minor seven. And sometimes when I'm playing the E minor seven, I'll play it like a G over B and pull my second finger off. That way I can do some other things on the E string. For the end of the song, there's a refrain and an instrumental buildup. During that point, they'll play a G5 and then a G suspended. And they will go back and forth between those two chords quite a bit. So a lot of times when I'm playing my G suspended, what I will do is just play my first finger on the first fret of the B string and leave it there. And then here's my G5. So to get from G5 to G suspended, all I have to do is pick up my third finger. And I can go pretty fast to get to that G suspended. You can also go to a regular G chord with, with just two fingers. <laughs> Basically my, third, my second finger and my fourth finger. So those are the chords that are used during the song. Let me play the intro of the song for you. And then I'll walk you through how to do that. So on the song, primarily, at least when I was first learning the song, I would just do down strums the entire time, which is what I would advise you to do the first time you're playing it. And then after a while,
while, whenever you want to, you can add an up strum from time to time, which I will do a lot of times when I'm changing a chord. Uh, if I'm going from a G to a C, sometimes I'll do an up strum. It kind of depends on where it fits, but I would just start with just straight down strums, which makes the song really easy um, to play as far as the right hand. So for the intro of the song, it starts out with a G, and then G over B, and then C, and then back to G over B, and then A minor, and then back to G over B, and then a C. So let me walk you through the intro. I'm gonna say the names of the chords as I'm playing them so that you can kind of get the feel for when I'm switching. So one and two and three and G, G over B, C. play that a little bit slower for you. One and two and three and G. G over B, C. G over B, A minor. G over B, C. G. G over B, C. G over B, A minor. G over B, C. So notice the entire time during the intro that my third and fourth fingers are staying rooted on the third fret of the B and E string. This is really great because when you're leading the song and you're standing in front of a bunch of people and you're leading the song, um, you know exactly where you're at. You don't think that you're accidentally up here playing some chord and then down here. You just know exactly where you're at on the guitar, which makes it pretty easy to play those chords once you kind of get, get them down. Another option for the intro and even other parts of the song is to do like some finger picking. So you could on the intro kind of do some finger picking. So here's the G, G over B, C, G over B, A minor, G over B, C, G, G over B, C, G over B, A minor, G over B, C. And so you can do some pretty cool stuff, especially if you're by yourself, to kind of add some variety to the song. Maybe you start it with really light strums. Or maybe you start it with the finger picking. And maybe add in some pull-offs and some hammer-ons. I'm just kind of pulling off between the, the third and the second fret there. For the verse of the song, it's going to start out on a G chord. I hear the Savior say, here's that G major 7. So once again, to go from a G to a G major 7, it's just a movement on the E string from your fourth finger on the third fret of the E string to your first finger on the second fret. And that's the G major 7. I hear, that's a G. The Savior say, that's G major 7, thy strength, that's D or D add 4 for me, indeed is small, that's a G chord, child of weakness, on the word weakness, that's E minor, ness watch and pray, that's a C, find in me, G chord, thine all, that's a D or D suspended, in all. On the word child of weakness, or that, that phrase, you can do a walk down because you're on a G chord and you're going to go to an E minor, so you could go. So, child of weakness, child of weakness, to kind of add a little bit of variety there as well. And so that's the, the verse of the song. You can also do the finger picking at that point if you wanted to. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness, watch and pray, find in me thine all in all. So you can do either strumming really lightly or do some finger picking. And then you come to the chorus of the song. The 
chorus of the song starts out with a G chord on the word Jesus. <laughs> so, Jesus, that's a G chord, paid it all, that's E minor. And then back to G, all to him I owe. On the word O, go to a D, or D suspended. Sin, that's a G, had left a crimson stain. That was a C chord, crimson stain. He washed it, that's a G chord. White, that's a D chord. As snow, back to G. And you can finger pick that as well, um, or just do down strums. One thing you can do on the first line of the chorus, if you want to add some more variety, is to do a little hammer-on on the E minor. So you have, um, Jesus paid it all. If you take your um, second finger and remove it, and either mute or not the D string, um, then you can use that second finger on the E string and kind of add a little bit of movement there. So it would be, Jesus paid it all. Kind of add a little bit of flair there. All to him I owe. On the D chord, you can do some hammer-ons and pull-offs on the first finger on that G string second fret. And kind of throw that into a strum or a pull-off. So there's a hammer-on, pull-off, or a combination. So you have G. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. So you kind of add that in. Sin had left a crimson stain. When you get to crimson stain on the C chord, the melody goes G, F sharp, E. So crimson stain, and on the word he, it goes back to a G. These are notes. Crimson stain, he. So it's three, two, zero, three on that E string. You can form all of that while you still have your G chord formed. If you play it with the D string muted by the second finger, it frees up your first finger to play that second fret. So you can play the third fret with your pinky, and then second fret with your, in, your middle uh, index finger, and then play it open, and then go back to the, the third fret with the pinky, and get the he in there. So it's crimson stain he. So it's on the E string, it's three, two, zero, three, while you still have the C chord formed. So here's the chorus. I'll play the, the down strums first, and then I'll show you the picking version of it. Uh, Jesus paid it all. And then you go back into the verse, or um, if towards the end of the song, then you'll go into another section called the refrain. So here is the chorus, if you were to finger pick it. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. So you can do either version. Um, at the end of the very first chorus, the whole band is gonna come in really hard. So at that point, I'm usually strumming. A lot of times I'll finger pick until that point, and then I'll just start strumming along with the band. So, And that's the song as far as you go. You go intro, verse, chorus, and you go back to the intro, and you do another verse, chorus, and then the intro again, and then another verse, chorus. And on that third chorus, it's usually a little bit lighter of a chorus. And at the end of it, you're going to repeat the line, sin had left a crimson stain. And you're going to repeat the line, he washed it white as snow. He washed it white as snow. So here is the last part of the third chorus. So you have sin had left a crimson stain. You're on that C chord or you're doing that movement. He washed it. That's a G. It white as snow. And do that again. Sin, sorry, on a G chord. Sin had left a crimson stain. It's a C chord. He washed it white as snow. 
finished it right that's a d as snow that last um, snow then you're gonna go back into he washed it white as snow so stay on a g he washed it white that's a d as snow then one more time he that's a g washed it white that's a d as snow on the last snow you're gonna go to g suspended and like I talked about earlier, to go back and forth between your G5 and your G suspended really um, depends on that B string. So you're gonna play your, your first fret relative to the capo with your first finger. So here's your normal G5, and here's your G suspended. So I picked up my ring finger and put my index finger down on the first fret. To go back and forth between the two, I would just leave my index finger down. And you can go back and forth really fast. So on that word snow, you're going to go to G suspended. He washed it white as snow. There's a couple measures of a build up. And then you go into refrain number one. Oh, praise the one. So on that build up, you can just stay on a G suspended the whole time, or you can. Um, add or subtract your first finger from time to time to get to the G chord. I think I do that on the very beginning of each measure. So it would be He washed it white as snow. I'm just kind of picking up my index finger to kind of give it a little bit of, of difference there, especially if I'm playing by myself. So I'm playing like Anyway, so you play that, and you can just stay on the G suspended if you want. Then you go into refrain number one, which is just going to go back and forth between a G5 chord and a G suspended over and over and over again. So it's, oh, praise the one, G5, who paid my debt, that's a G suspended, and raised, that's a G, this life up from, on the word from, you're back to G suspended again. The dead, oh, praise the one. So when I'm playing this, a lot of times I will just leave my index finger down. And so it may not look like I'm doing anything. I'm just barely picking up my third finger. Um, but it's, it's G. Oh, praise the one who Jesus made. picking that finger up um, so it doesn't look like I'm doing a whole lot but that's what and I'm really not actually but that's what's happening there in case you're missing that I'm just picking up my ring finger and so a lot of times when I'm when I'm playing that's what I'll do for you I'll try to you know overemphasize my movements there so you can see but here is refrain number one. Oh, praise the one into intro chords so the G G over B C G over B A minor G over B C that little run we did on the intro now you're gonna do that on refrain um, number two so you just finish that and then you go oh praise the so praise the one is G Praise the one who, that's G over B, who paid my debt, that's a C, and G over B, raised, that's A minor, this life up, on the word up, you go to G over B, up from the dead, that's the C, oh, praise the one. couple times and then you're going to end the song by either going to a G chord, you can play the intro, you can stay on a, a C chord if you want, which is what I do a lot of times and I'll do that refrain again just kind of hanging out on a C chord and then every once in a while I'll drop my third fret E string and go to the second fret E string, but still forming that C chord. Oh, praise the Lord. Jesus. 
whatever you want to do there towards the end, or you can have a time of prayer, or whatever it is you're doing, and have the band just kind of stay on the C or tell them to go to the G. But that's the bulk of the song. I hope this has been beneficial to you and that it's an encouragement to you that maybe you got something out of it that you can apply to the next time you lead this song. Like I said before, it's one of my favorite um, hymns and this is one of my favorite versions of it. Um, if this is something that you enjoyed and got something out of it, go ahead and give me a thumbs up down below. If you want to stay updated on my channel, just go ahead and subscribe and have a great and awesome day.